we've seen now that we can apply linear transformations in different coordinate systems. The transformations that we've been performing before have all been with respect to the standard basis. So in the last video, I said, look, in standard coordinates, if you have some vector x in your domain and you apply some transformation, then let's say that A is the transformation matrix with respect to the standard domain or with respect to the standard basis, then you're just going to have this mapping. You take x, you multiply it by A, you're going to get the transformation of x. Now in the last video and a couple of videos before that, or actually the one right before that, we said, well look, you can do the same mapping but just in an alternate coordinate system. You could do it with respect to some coordinate system or uh, in, in some coordinate system with respect to some basis B. And that should be the same thing. It should just be a different transformation matrix. And in the last video, we actually figured out what that different transformation matrix is. We had a change of basis. So let's say we had this basis right here. Let me actually copy and paste everything so that we understand what we did. So this was the example. Let me copy it. Let me paste it up here. Put all of our takeaways from the last video up here. Let me paste it right here. So in the last video, we said, OK, this is my basis right there. And then we said, let me copy and paste. Let me copy and paste. That was my alternate basis. And then I have my change of basis matrix and its inverse. Those will be useful to deal with. So let me copy and paste that. OK, copy. And then I'm going to paste it. Edit, paste. Maybe it'll. Maybe I'll just write it over there. Not maybe the best order. Maybe I should have written that first. But I think we get the idea. And then we want to figure out. We want to write what our transformation matrix is with respect to the standard basis. And I wrote that. I wrote that right over here. This was all from the last problem. If you're wondering where I got all this stuff, so let me copy and then paste that. Edit, paste. So I'll paste that. And then in the, the whole point of the last video is we figured out what the transformation matrix is with respect to this basis. With respect to this basis right here. So D, which was the big takeaway from the last video, was equal to this right here. Let me copy and paste that. Copy and paste. And now we have all of our takeaways in one place. Edit. Paste. And what I want to do in this video is verify, is to verify that D actually works. That D actually works. That I could start with some vector x. That I can let me write it up here. Let's say we let's take some example vector. So we can this transformation, its entire domain is R2. So let's start with some vector x. Let's say that x is equal to, I don't know. Let's say it's equal to one. Minus one. Now we could just apply the transformation in the traditional way and get the transformation of x. So let's just do that. The transformation of x is just this matrix times x. And so what is that going to equal? Let me see. Maybe I can just do it right here in this corner to save space. So it's going to be this matrix times x. So this first term right here is going to be three times one plus minus two times minus one. Or plus 2, right? Minus 2 times minus 1 is just 2. So it's going to be 3 plus 2. So it's going to be equal to 5. And then the second term right here is going to be 2 times 1 plus minus 2 times minus 1. Well, that's just positive 2. So it's going to be 2 plus 2. So that is 4. So that's just the transformation of x. Now, what is, what is this vector x? What is this vector x represented? represented in coordinates, or I guess we could say to this alternate basis coordinates. So what is that vector x represented in coordinates with respect to this basis right here? Well, you saw before, I wrote them out here. Maybe it'll be useful to do it right here. The coordinate, I'll, I'll copy this. Little, actually, I'll let me copy both of these. These will both be useful. Edit, copy. As you can see, if you want to go from x to the to the x in an alternate basis, or the alternate coordinate representations of x, you essentially multiply x times c inverse. But that's, that's why I'm copying and pasting it. Let me copy, and then let me put it up here so that we can apply these. So then paste it right there. So if we want to go, 
if we want to go from if we want to go from x to the b coordinates of x i take my x and i multiply it times c inverse c inverse is this thing right here so if i take x and i multiply it times c inverse and i multiply it times c inverse i'll get this version of x so let's do that let me be accurate so this times that let me just put the minus one third out front so it's going to be equal to minus one third times let's see if we can do this one in our head as well so it's going to be one times one plus minus two times minus one which is just positive two so it's going to be one plus two so it's going to be equal to three and then it's minus two times one which is minus two plus one times minus one which is just minus one so it's minus two minus one it's minus three so if we have minus one third times this the b coordinate representation of our vector x is going to be is going to be equal to it's going to be equal to minus 1 and then 1 just like that which is actually interesting for this example it just kind of swapped the the first entry and the second entry now let's see what happens when we apply d to x so if we apply d to x, right? D should be our transformation matrix if we're dealing in the b coordinates. So let's see what happens. So if we apply d to x, let me scroll over a little bit. Let me scroll over a little bit just so that we get a little bit more real estate. So if we apply d to x, what do we get? And so this what this is going to be this is going to be the transformation or this should be the transformation of x in b coordinates. So what is this going to be equal to? What is this going to be equal to? We have to multiply this times d. So it's going to be minus 1 times minus 1, which is 1, plus 0 times 1. So it's just minus 1 times minus 1, which is 1. And then we're going to get 0 times minus 1 plus 2 times 1. So 2 times 1 is just 2. 2 times 1 is just 2. Now, if for everything to work together, and assuming I haven't made any careless mistakes, this thing, this vector right here, should be the same as this vector if I change my basis. So if I go from the standard basis to the basis B, and when you go in that direction, you just multiply this guy times C inverse. So you, and I'm just using this formula right here. If I'm in the standard basis, I multiply by C inverse, I'm going to get the B basis. So let's see what I get. So this guy, I'm going to multiply him times C inverse. Let me do it up here just to get some extra space. Let me do it right here. So I'm going to multiply the vector 5, 4. I'm going to multiply that by C inverse. So we're going to have minus 1 third times 1 minus 2 minus 2, 1. Just like that. So this is going to be equal to, I'll just write the minus 1 third out front. And we have 1 times 5 which is 5, let me just write this right, 5, plus minus 2 times 4, so 5 minus 8, 5 minus 8. And then we have minus 2 times 5, which is minus 10, minus 10, and then we have one, plus 1 times 4, minus 2 times 5, which is minus 10 plus 1 times 4, plus 4. So this is equal to minus 1 third times minus 3, and this is what? This is minus 6. If you multiply them minus one third times it, all the negatives cancel out, and you get one and two, which is exactly what we needed to get. When you take this guy and you change its basis to basis B, or you change its coordinate system to the coordinate system with respect to B, you multiply it by C inverse, you get that right there. So this is this literally is the B coordinate representation of the transformation of x. We just did it by multiplying it by C inverse, which is exactly what we got when we took the B coordinate version of x, the B coordinate version of x, and we applied that matrix that we found that the the transformation matrix with respect to the B coordinates, when you multiply it times this guy right here, we got the same answer. So it didn't matter whether we went this way around this little cycle or we went this way we got the same answer. This isn't a proof, but it shows us that what we did in the last video at least works for this case. And I literally did pick a random x here. And you can verify it if you like for other things.
Now, you should hopefully be reasonably convinced that we can do this, that you know you can change your basis and find a transformation matrix. We've shown how to do it. But the obvious question is, why do you do it? Why? Why do you do it? And someone actually wrote a comment on the last video, which I think is actually, it kind of captures the art of why you do it. Someone, I, if I, I'm not looking at the comment right now, but if I remember correctly, it said some, they said their linear algebra teacher said that linear algebra is the art of choosing the right basis. Let me write that down. The art of choosing, choosing the right basis. Or, you could imagine the right coordinate system. And why is there a right coordinate system? Maybe I'll put little quotes inside the quotation. What, what does it mean to have the right coordinate system? Well, if you look at the original transformation matrix with respect to the standard basis, it's fine. It's got this two by two. But if you performed matrix operations with this, it's you know you got to do some you got to do some math. And if you had to perform it over and over, if you had to perform it on a bunch of vectors, it might get a little bit you know it is what it is. But when you transfer your bases, when you go to a new basis, when you went to this basis right here, all of a sudden you find that the transformation matrix is much simpler. It's a diagonal matrix. When you multiply a diagonal matrix times something, you're literally just taking scaling factors of the first and second terms. When you multiply this guy times some vector, we did it here. When you multiplied this this guy, when you multiplied this guy times this vector, you literally just scaled the first term times minus one, and you scaled the second term by two. So it's a much simpler operation. And you might say, hey, but we have to do all of that work of multiplying by C inverse to get there. And then once you get this answer, you're going to have to multiply by C to go back into standard coordinates. You know, That's a lot more work than just what you save here. But imagine if you had to pro apply D multiple times. Imagine if you had to apply D times D times D times D to X. Or, and, and, or you know, let, well, let me say it this way. Imagine if you had to apply A times A times A. Like you had to apply A 100 times to some, to some vector up here. Then applying a a hundred times to some vector, it would be much more computationally intensive than applying d a hundred times to this vector, even though you had a little bit of overhead from converting in this direction and then converting back. So in a lot of problems, especially in computer science, frankly, or you know some other applications you might be doing, you want to pick the right basis. That problems, or at least uh, the computation for many problems, get a lot simpler if you pick the right uh, the right the right coordinate 